Welcome back everyone. My name is Caitlin. I am the editor of International Confectionery and International Baker magazine. Today I have the utmost pleasure of speaking with Hayley Osborne uh, at Papetti Van Mel. Could you please introduce yourself, um, Hayley, for our audience and talk a little bit about what you do at the company? Thanks. Hi, Caitlin. Um, so my name is Hayley Osborne and I am the Communications and Sustainability Manager mm-hmm. at Perfetti Van Mel UK. Perfetti Van Mel is the world's third largest confectionery business um, and we employ about 19,000 employees worldwide. To the UK, we bring the wonderful confectionery products of Fritella, Mentos, Mentos Gum, Chuppa Chups and Smint. Um, so I've been enrolled for about 18 months at Perfetti Van Mel, um, but I have a 20 plus career hist- um, well, career in communications, marketing and PR. But for Perfetti Van Mel, I'm responsible for the internal and external communications of the business, as well as looking after the sustainability agenda. Um, I work alongside a wonderful team, both here in the UK, but also across the world, because we're all facing the same um, the same challenges every day. Um, but Sustainability is actually a new area for me. So when joining Perfetti Van Mel, the world of ESG and CSR was was just more of a general interest. So I've been on a real steep learning curve over the last 18 months, but um, I've learned so much already and have such great insight and understanding into what can be quite a often complex world. I, th- I think that's a really good point, Hayley. Um, sustainability takes many forms, has many meanings. So what 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 does it mean to you? Uh, so that's, it's a really good question and it means so many different things to me. Um, it's it's like the careful and considered balance of everything to be ensuring um, a protection of everything, really. So whether it's the planet and all the finite resources that we've got and its inhabitants to citizens and impact on the world. Um, I actually think too many people think it's just about climate change and that's all it is, but it isn't. It's so much more. Um, So the breadth can be including things like gender equality, zero hunger um, and no poverty, for example. If you sort of look to the United Nations Sustainability Goals, they have 17 agendas within sustainability. So it is just so much more. I did a talk in front of some school children recently and I needed to talk it was a careers day about what I do and obviously I needed to keep it simple and I think it should be simple for everybody it's simply doing the right thing for the planet the people and the future yeah I, I mean imagining how you would explain it to school children without inundating them information I think it's a really good point that you want to you want to take that and you want to make it just as simple as easy and as easy to understand with adults I mean that makes perfect sense yeah um and it's it's a growing area and it's on the top of everyone's agenda which is fantastic to see so you mentioned you're new to the sustainability industry Hayley um how have you found it and what would your advice be to people who are perhaps getting who are interested in getting more involved in the sector yeah, so you're right. It's really new to me, uh, Caitlin, and um, I've always, but I've always had an invested interest in it. So in previous roles, I've been involved with general CSR responsibilities, but it's never been on such a granular level. Uh, so also the communications and sustainability role that I'm in now was a brand new role for Perfetti Van Mel. So I had no incumbent or anyone to follow, um, and there was a blank piece of paper for us. So um, I, it just, you know, I could I could take it however I felt um, was necessary for the business. What I've really quickly found out is that there are really very true, there are very few experts in the world of sustainability. Um, and I actually believe that everyone as citizens of the planet actually has to do their best to take responsibility. And that's what I try and bring back to everybody at Perfetti Van Mel. There's lots of information out there that everyone can get their hands on um, to help further their education, whether that's from LinkedIn learning courses or BBC documentaries. Um, the FDF are really good with a lot of information and um, there are always conferences within the industry as well. So I use LinkedIn massively and follow so many different companies and charities um all just sort of understanding what they're doing and learning from them um it's just really available if we want it it also helped to start conversations and once i started talking i'm realizing that actually peers in my sector we are all in a similar position we're all trying to learn we're all trying to share knowledge and and get to feel 
that we understand it a bit better, really. So um, that really helped eliminate any of my imposter syndrome that I had because, uh, you know, once I realised that we're all just the same, we're all waiting for that next update from the government or DEFRA and we don't know how that's going to affect our business or how that's going to affect our profits. So having those conversations help us to, to build power. Um, I also feel that I'm not the only responsible what well, person responsible for it at Festival Mail UK. Um, it's actually part of our global strategy, one of the four main pillars. And so equally, as team members, we all have responsibility and have to take an active approach to it within our roles. I formed um, a sustainability ambassador group when I not long after I first started of 12 members across the entire team. And we have a weekly update called uh, Waste Not Wednesdays which we each take an active um, approach to sharing something within the business, promoting, educating, and um, it just brings other experiences to the team, which we've all been learning from as well. So I think my my takeaways and my top tips, I think, for anybody is to understand that we are all on a journey as businesses and individuals. Um, we all have different starting places. We're all taking different routes and we're all facing different obstacles, but we're all heading towards a similar situation or destination, shall I say. We can't solve every problem or need, but if we can try and fix or do something with the areas in our control, then we're all taking a positive step in that right direction. I think I think that's a really good point to recognise that sustainability is constantly evolving. Our our mean our understanding and our meanings. Although it sounds like you have a challenge on your hands as the role as you were saying, is is new within the company. It is fantastic to hear from you, um, the steps you've taken and the people that you're sharing know-how with. So with that said, what would you say are the focus points for ensuring greater sustainability in the context of the confectionery industry? And equally, what are the greatest challenges that we need to address? Yeah, well, I think, you know, there's there's no secret that the confectionery industry is can be associated with negativity around sustainability, um, whether it's the sourcing of and the use of its ingredients, um, the labour, product miles, packaging um, or impacts of littering as well, just to name a few. We are quite rightly under the scrutiny of everybody across the industry. Um, but what I feel really confident about is we know that as an industry, we are aware of those problems and we're making great strides to, to improve those across the sector. So everyone is doing it. We're all trying our best. At Fetty Vermel, for example, we uh, created a role of Chief Sustainability Officer back in 2021. And it's his responsibility to look after the sustainability concerns from across the entire business. So not just the UK, but all over. Um, and as part of his role, he heads up a number of different uh, working groups made up of experts from all across the business and working on these key challenges every single day. That is what they do working for our future, looking at things like improving packaging, looking at our footprint, reporting um, and just the, the, the general customer and, sustain, and supplier relationship. Plastic is obviously a massive topic for us in confectionery um, and it's something that we talk about a lot in, in the office. Um, but, you know, it is actually worth noting and um, for everyone to, you know, understand and recognise that there is a role for plastic um, in all packaging. We need to consider food safety and all the freshness of the product as well. But our active challenge and what we are striving to do is to eliminate unnecessary plastic. It's the plastic that you just don't need. Um, and if it can be replaced with something better, then that's what we're aiming for. So as a couple of examples, um, we over the last year have replaced the plastic stick in our chopper chops lolly into a paper stick. Um, and that will reduce about 5000 metric tons over the next three years annually. We also, in our Mentos uh, Pure Fresh Gum, was originally in a plastic-based based bottle, but it's now in a paperboard bottle, um, which is made up of 90% uh, paperboard, which overall will take out like 93% of plastic out of the out of the industry as well. So, and we're always looking for other idea, uh, other ideas and avenues we can do to to take away this unnecessary plastic. Amazing, and you know, company of your size, even the little steps create so much impact so that's fantastic to hear it, it can be easy to view sustainability through the narrow lens of packaging so outside of packaging and ingredients what else is Perfetti Van Mel doing um, to address sustainability? 
Yeah, so if I go back to the earlier point, you know, there are so many different areas of sustainability. It's not just plastic, it's not just climate change. Um, it can encapsulate things like uh, gender equality, well-being, employee well-being and DNI as general. Um, and it's within my role and then working with um, other people within, like, say, HR, that we're working on that together. So we've actually, over the last couple of years, um, since up before I joined and, and whilst being here, um, that we've changed a lot. Um, and we've got so much more in our plans as well. Well, so we're about there's a team of 50 that we have in the UK so we're still relatively quite small but we are growing we have ambitious plans and our headcount's only ever going to increase so because of that we want to make sure we're ready for the future and not waiting to be a large company to start acting like a larger company so we're sort of working on the, the catchphrase of a small mental sorry small company with a big ambition so um and we're we've got budget and we've got resource available then we're trying our best to introduce as much as we can to help all of our teams and their families um so we've actually recently just done a survey with a third party company called utopia looking into how we approach dni and we had really um impressive and um positive results from that which was really good and shows that we are making a difference um, but lots of little things that we do that um, we really recognise. So um, we provide food beverages and breakfast to the team every day. We have weekly team lunches. We support multiple awareness days and always offer additional support for the team. Um, I sometimes have expert speakers in to educate and support. We last, at the end of last year trained eight mental health first aid um, first aiders and now have a planned program ahead of us for uh, mental health support for everybody. We've actually got some policies um, in place as well that rival much larger companies as well, we found out, including um, enhanced maternity and paternity and adoption leaves. Uh, we have a menopause policy. We ran um, menopause training for our managers. We um, have summer and winter hours, which are lovely at the, at the moment within the summer. And um, we also have a full flexible and hybrid style of working. So there is loads I could go on, but um, all of these are helping to sustain our business and make it the best that we can for, for ourselves, but also for, for our families as well. You, you said you're new, Hayley, but it sounds like all sweeter hairs. Oh, that, there's lots of, and it, oh, I have to say, it's not just down to me, but yes, you know, it's collectively we're, we're doing so much is happening. It's really positive. It's fantastic. Um, when we talk about sustainability as well, there is, a, of course, um, a desire on the consumer side to, and also just everyone working in the supply chain, supply chain to understand um, what's going on, how they can keep track. So, how how are you ensuring transparency in your business? So. That's another part of our journey, if I'm honest. We are a private family owned business. So from because of that, we don't have any shareholders that we need to annually report to. But we do understand that, you know, the importance of maintaining relationships with suppliers and retailers and consumers is, is imperative now. And, and we can't keep that information uh, behind closed doors. Um, so back in 2021, our chief sustainability officer, we sort of his um, planning that we signed to the SBTIs and um, so you know ensuring that we're doing the right thing we've signed up to them so there's a science-based target initiative and because of that we're going to be reporting our targets this year so uh, watch this space we will have information shortly. It's very exciting to hear <laughs> I will keep an eye out on that um, other than that do you share have you shared information on your sustainability targets before? No, I no, my, no we haven't. Um, I think once again, I think, you know, as part of our journey, um, we, we're aware of them. We're very conscious about them inside. We, we will have those conversations with trade um, when we're having meetings. But this will be the first time that we've been that transparent. Um, and that's, you know, that's just from our learnings that we've come across up to date. Well, that's exciting. I'm sure everyone will keep an eye out for that. Um, you mentioned, you know, relationships. Yeah. Um, we always talk about relationships in the convection industry and other industries because it's so important. So what would you say is the value of partnering with other businesses to achieve greater sustainability? Well, I think it's important that to note we're not in isolation on this journey where everyone is the same, whether it's business, whether it's citizens, we, you know, it's important. And surely, you know, power in numbers, it's imperative for everyone to work together. 
so earlier this year, we signed to the UK Plastics Pact as a full member. Um, so through various conversations within the business and with them and the team at RAP, we just felt, you know, it was a really important place for us to have a seat and have a voice at that table, working with our customers and working with our peers to, you know, collaborating together. All of that information that you're sharing is invaluable. Um, and because of that, we get access to data and experts and learnings that we can take back to our business, but which will hopefully, you know, help us move along this journey quicker. Um, we are also partners with um, the industry charity, which I'm sure everyone is aware of, Grocery Aid. So we support them as much as we can. But in return, you know, we benefit from their assistance greatly. Um, their advice, their program of um, different webinars and things. We also use them as our own EAP service as well. So, you know, collectively we can gain a lot from them to help us with our sustainability journey. Um, and I think finally, uh, as an example, we work with Keep Britain Tidy as well with the, and other gun manufacturers on the Chewing Gum Task Force. So that task force um, is a five year project where we um, are equipping local councils across all four nations with all the tools and signage needed to clean up the streets um, of the Chewing Gum litter, unfortunately. But um, and also the signage helps to encourage less littering. And we found that, you know, by doing this together with other manufacturers and re uh, you know pulling together all our resources we can work to clean up the streets better and educate consumers together and collectively you know action this action creates much more of an impact so collaboration sharing know-how yeah 100 yeah. percent. Really yeah we shouldn't be in isolation really i think you know everybody people around the, you know around the UK today oh, we're all facing the same challenges so you know why not team up and, and work on it together absolutely I mean um on the on the topic of sharing know-how that is exactly one of the reasons we wanted to establish confectionery live so that we have people coming together having these conversations realizing that a lot of the challenges they're facing everybody's facing so by being able to come together and talk about them um maybe there isn't a solution straight away i mean sustainability is such a complex um it's complex it is, so yeah. <laughs> um on, the, on that topic, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me, Hayley, here at Confectionery Live and for sharing everything that you do. It's daunting, but it's amazing to see the steps that you're taking. And I look forward to seeing the targets that you're sharing later on in the year. That's great, Caitlin. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.